I want to make a quick video on temperature regulation. In our unit on regulation, we've talked about the urinary system and regulating our, our ion levels and our pH and our, our blood pressure and uh, the waste and composition of our blood. But what about temperature? And why is temperature important? Well, we know that enzymes have a, a pretty narrow range of temperature in which they'll work optimally. So keeping temperature uh, c consistent or stable uh, plays a big role in kind of uh, allowing our metabolism to work at the right rates that we need it to. First issue I want to think about in sort of a big concept is, is this a bigger difference uh, in a terrestrial environment versus an aquatic environment? And we know, based on our properties of water, that water temperatures tend to change slowly due to the, the those hydrogen bonds between the water. And so for these fish, uh, if there's a cold front that comes in, the temperature of the ocean or the lake that's swimming around in is not going to change very drastically, or at least it's not going to change quickly. Uh, it's going to change at a rate which they can respond to by either just moving to a different temperature water, uh, migrating, or 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 uh, moving to a different depth of water for different temperature. But when you live on land, uh, we know that air temperatures can change drastically in a, um, a short period of time. You can go to bed uh, and it's a warm, and wake up in the morning and it's freezing cold, and vice versa. So uh, when animals and plants move onto land, um, the t the effect of temperature and temperature change has a much bigger impact. Uh, and as a result, some animals have a very narrow range of habitats in which they can live uh, because they don't have the ability to adjust for these temperature changes. And conversely, some animals have really adapted to, to live in extreme temperatures, hot or cold, and as a result have given themselves an advantage, uh, at least in those environments. Before we go further, we need to define some terms. Ectotherm, endotherm, poikilotherm, and homeotherm. Ectotherm the word ecto means from out, outside, and therm means heat, means heat from outside. Uh, we do not use the term cold-blooded and warm-blooded. Instead, we use ectotherm and endotherm. Uh, fish, for example, would have been considered cold-blooded, but the reality is if the water in your fish tank is warm, then your fish's blood uh, is warm. And so they're not cold-blooded, but they are ectotherms. Their temperature, their core body temperature, their body temperature depends on their external temperature because they cannot generate enough heat and don't have enough insulation to, uh, to, to, mod to regulate their own body temperatures. Um, these animals that are ectotherms, fish, amphibians, uh, reptiles, do manage to maintain their body temperatures either by choosing environments that are relatively stable or engaging in some behavioral um, temperature regulation, such as basking in the sun or estivating, getting up under the rocks and the mud um, to, to either conserve heat or to cool off. Um, Endotherms, endo meaning heat from within, endotherms typically have a high metabolic rate, so their their metabolism is running at such a rate there's excess heat uh, as a byproduct of those chemical reactions, and oftentimes they have things like feathers, fur, layers of fat, and in the case of uh, humans, clothing to trap the heat. There's two other terms, the, uh, terms <laughs> that we need to look at, though. They're a little bit different, uh, related, but different. The term poikilotherm is an animal whose temperature, internal temperature, can vacillate. That's not spelled right. Uh, vacillate. There we go. Vacillate. Uh, and homeotherms, animals who maintain a constant internal temperature. Now you might think that uh, if you're an ectotherm, you're a poikilotherm, and most likely you are, but again, if you're a fish that's in a fish tank and the temperature of that water isn't changing, while you are uh, an ectotherm, your body temperature could remain constant. So if your environment is constant, then you are essentially homeothermic. Um, but again, most ectotherms are poikilotherms, animals whose internal temperatures vacillate. And typically, most endotherms are homeotherms, but some of them aren't very good homeotherms. I'll give you an example. These meerkats. You see the meerkats, you see them on the animal planet, animal channel, um, and they all stand up in the mornings and they, they face the sun. And the, um, the legend, the myth, is that they were facing east, uh, look, facing Mecca, and they were praying, and they were doing their morning prayers. But in reality, what's happening with the meerkats are they live in the desert. And then the day it's warm, but at night it's really cold. And the meerkats don't have a lot of fur, uh, that thick of fur, and they don't have a lot of real thick layer of fat. So at nighttime, when the desert cools off, their body temperatures drop. So in the mornings, they get up and face the sun and open up the bottom part of their body, the broad side of their body. Uh, to the sun, it's just them warming up uh, so they can become more active for the day. Uh, hummingbirds can do this at night or in the morning where they'll flap their wings real fast to generate heat to warm up because they've dropped so much heat um, 
during the nighttime. So just because they're endotherms, they generate their heat from within, they're not great homeotherms. They don't, con they don't maintain a constant homeo uh, temperature very well. So we've got to make sure we understand the difference between these terms. Now, how do animals regulate their body temperature? Well, we can regulate our body temperature with physiology and behavior. So animals can adjust their temperature through physiology, depending on the rate of metabolism and the amount of insulation. We have to do two things. There's a two-part system here. We have to generate heat, which we do through met metabolism as we burn fuel. Uh, energy is given off in the form of heat as a waste product because those energy conversions are not uh, perfect. And uh, then we have to trap the heat. So through muscle action and metabolism, we make heat. And then through things like fat and fur and hair, uh, we can trap that heat. We also have mechanisms for cooling off, like sweating. Uh, and dogs, dogs don't sweat, but they'll, they'll stick their tongue out and they'll pant, and the tongue will swell. And as they're panting, they're losing heat from their breath. And also, uh, as the water evaporates off their tongue, it cools their, the blood vessels that are running through the tongue and cools off their body. Our skin has a number of, of roles in temperature regulation, vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Vasoconstriction is the constriction of blood vessels in the skin, which we would do if we were cold. We would constrict those blood vessels so we don't lose as much heat to the environment. Uh, conversely, when we're warm, the blood vessels in the skin will dilate, um, make our skin kind of red, but also lets off heat, and it helps us cool down. Of course, in our skin as mammals, we have sweat glands. We produce sweat, and as the sweat evaporates off the surface of the skin, uh, it takes heat away. Um, uh, another physiological uh, reaction to being too cold is shivering, where our muscles contract real fast, we again generating heat. Uh, when we get goosebumps, when the hair on our skin stands up, um, that's actually a mechanism helping us to lose less heat because the, the wind as it blows across our body has to go up and over those hairs instead of directly across the skin so we lose less heat. Uh, and again, we have hair, uh, fat, uh, aquatic marine uh, mammals have blubber, thick layers of fat to trap the heat. So it's a two-part uh, deal. F uh, birds, uh, even though we're talking about human physiology, birds have feathers that can trap heat. And also, obviously, birds have a very high rate of metabolism, so they're generating a lot of heat. But besides just physiology, we have a lot of um, behavioral temperature regulation, which the ectotherms, the fish and the amphibians and reptiles, use to uh, adjust their behavior. And also things like the meerkats and uh, this elephant here is doing the same thing. This elephant's fanning out its, its big flat surface ears because it's collecting the, the heat from the sun. And the blood vessels in the ears can dilate or constrict to um, pick up that heat. And so it's like big solar panels that the, the elephant has. And when the elephant will flap its ears, uh, and dilate those blood vessels is doing that to, uh, to get out heat, to give off heat and cool that blood that's going through those lo very large blood vessels in the ears uh, off, and then that cooler blood goes into the body. So it's engaging in some behavioral and physiological um, temperature regulation kind of uh, at the same time. Uh, here's an alligator basking in the sun. That's a behavior to warm up. Usually you see this in the morning uh, instead of the afternoon. When it's afternoon when it's hot, they'll get into the water or down up under the mud to cool off. And uh, these polar bears are just chilling out. And obviously these polar bears have adapted a very thick layer of fur and uh, fat to insulate their body so they can sustain these very or withstand these very cold temperatures. Um, what else do we have here? A uh, picture of vasodilation versus vasoconstriction here. Talking about the skin, sweating, shivering. Here's a turtle basking in the sun. Um, one more concept before we're done here. Um, the terms of regulators versus conformers. Uh, a regulator is an animal who whose internal condition will remain con constant even though the environmental conditions around it are changing. And conformers, uh, their internal condition will change with the environment. Okay. So that's our quick video on temperature regulation and some terms that we need to know. We will be spending very little time in class on this, so please watch the video, uh, take some notes, and uh, hope that uh, explains everything well.